Well, g'day and welcome to another video. Um, I'm out here today on a wind still, but very wet day. <laughs> of all the days, I kind of choose to come to the range. It's raining in the middle of summer. So, but anyway, here we are. Um, I have here a Friends 270 Wisdom Winchester Short Magnum. Um, and I'm going to be loading the 145 grain Hornady ELDX. Um, he wants to set this up to have a little bit more punch down to 400 yards. Um, so I'll be doing a load development with this rifle. Uh, fortunately, I will not be able to run my chronograph today because it will get really wet and it will break again. So I'll have to just shoot groups today and take it out again as I work around the accuracy node. Um, take it out again and shoot on a not rainy day, nice sunny day, and get some speeds. So I'm hoping we get about 3,150. Um, yeah, no, probably a little less. 3,120, something like that. That's on a 22 and a half inch barrel with a suppressor. And I'm using a bit of a new primer today um, that I have worked with in three different rifles and they were, seemed good. It's an Anvil Sonoxide European primer. Um, so what I've got here is my sheet, my load sheet. Oh, you probably can't read that, it's backwards. Um, but basically I'm restricted by my magazine again, which I don't really like. But these modern projectiles, because of the shape of the O-Drive that comes down. They do pretty well with jumping. Uh, this one will be jumping. I'm doing some maths right now. About 95 thousandths, again. So I would prefer to be 2.949 overall inches to the lens, but I can only get 2.865 in the magazine. So, yeah, it's all good. We'll see. Um, so we're going to run through some shots and basically I've got, I'm using AR2225, so Rotumbo, um, normal cases, yeah, anvil primer, um, temperature is about 18 degrees and very wet, <laughs> it's actually slowed down a little bit, but starting at 69 grains of powder going to work through to 70.5 um, grains of powder and yeah I'll show you the rifle as well it's definitely a bush bashed rifle mm. <laughs> it's definitely seen quite a bit of bush <laughs> but that's okay um, it's not a princess rifle it's been used I'll show you the rifle and then we'll get into it okay here it is Seen plenty of rocks, plenty of trees. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is this is it. She's nothing flash, but you know what? It just you just doesn't you don't need anything really flash to be honest. Most of the rifles coming out are shooting Sobi Moe, and they just get it done. The main important thing was. I bore teched this and the bore is very nice and shiny and crisp and everything else. It's only done about 100 rounds ish. And um, bore teched it, cleaned it out, and it came up good. So the suppressor's fitted well as well. Um, it is bedded in here as well, which was good to see. The scope is a little bit better to be desired. Um, so it'll be interesting to see when we verify the load if it actually can track well. It is it is resettable. Um, I personally really like Vixen scopes. They are I find them for bang for buck. I've actually got one on my 284 Winchester and I really really rate it. Um, it's lightweight, like quite light compared to a Leopold VX5. It's got illumination and everything, but it's about half the price. So Japanese class. ED class, Japanese class, um, and just a brand name that should be more prominent. 
but they don't really put much time and money into marketing, so it's not. But anyway, here we go. We're going to shoot away. We've got a box set up out here, which is absolutely soaking wet. It's um, bang on 99 and a half yards. Um, and we'll get some groups done. Okay, here's final results. Um, start with group A. So this rifle did the same thing every single time. Um, I would be gapping it eight minutes between shots to give it as much cold bore as I could without this taking like three days. But basically it would shoot two touching, which is great. And then it would throw the third one. Probably just the barrel just starting to heat up. Um, but yeah, basically that's that's group A. Um, this one here is a 15 millimeter group. Then group B was the second one. So yeah, I actually moved the scope a bit. So shot two, two shots again, nice and close together. Um, even though I get the third one, that being a magnum lightweight barrel, just threw the third shot out again. Um, so I'm pretty sure if I get say that shot an hour. It would probably come into here. Same with that one here. Probably come into here. So accurate rifle. Yeah. Um, group C just wasn't. I only did two shots, and then I put one shot over the chronograph just to try and in the in the sh like trees just to try and get out of the rain, but it didn't actually pick up the speed. So this group's discarded. So it's still. Uh, Oh, it's still actually under an inch, believe it or not. It's still 24 mil from side to side. But um, yeah, I discarded that group. This one here, sorry, group B is 31 millimeters from side to side. And in group C, that's gone group D, which was my hottest um, group. So 70.5 grains, so that's getting up to the max. And it, um, we got a little bit of primer pressure, so I'm still happy with that, but... Um, that shot, not bad, it's the same again though, two touching shots. <clears throat> and then spat that one out to 28mm group. So, <clears throat> pretty pretty typical of a factory kind of rifle like this. Especially a Magnum, um, well if it was a 7mm mag it would, really really lightweight 7mm mag, it probably would shoot it even further out. Um, yeah, it's an accurate rifle um, that loves having a clean barrel, which is good like a squeaky clean barrel um, <clears throat> and then so yeah group A and group D are the ones that we're going to star and do a little bit more loading around those two groups not too much but um, I'll probably just put the option to and look you know do you want to be going 70 feet per second quicker a little bit less accurate or do you want to be going a bit slower and more accurate uh, I'd probably probably choose the lower one if it was me but um yeah good really these are these are good numbers um <clears throat> nice nice hovering around that moa mark so yeah working around the 69 grains here sort of up and down um i'd probably even coming down to 68.8 might find that that node there's a node there and then there's another node in here somewhere I did not load 70.8, <clears throat> I kind of wished I did now, <laughs> um, but that's kind of getting up there in the pressure, so um, I could load 70.7 and see if that group comes down to, you know, comes down, but basically I think what this rifle was doing is the middle two, the middle two groups here in this node um, are not good, but it's basically, it's got a nice pattern to it but it's spitting that third shot every single time just how far it spits it it's probably relates to how hot the barrel is so yeah there you go well good morning guys I'm out here early with the uh, 270 wisdom just finalizing uh, that one of those loads that shot quite well so we're gonna shoot <clears throat> up in behind me here, I've got the chronograph, should work today, so I've given it a good clean and dried it out. Um, 
and we're going to shoot some. Um, we're going to shoot a three-shot group, gapping the shots ten minutes apart, and then um, we're going to basically set this the Vixen. It's a version one scope. Um, we're going to set that up with holdovers because I don't think it's going to track all that well and we can't actually reset the turret so I'll show you how I do that but we're going to set that uh, reticle up in Streelock Pro to be able to shoot out to I think it's about 460 yards just using holdovers so we're going to verify all that today and maybe shoot some balloons um, out of those distances alright so I'll get into it Okay, here we are. So, I had a bit of a problem with my 26 nozzler when she hit the ground right in front of the target and it just sprayed up, ripped all the targets off. So, basically there's no hole behind that one because it was actually stapled in a different area. It just blew all the targets off. It's a bit of a pain. But, um, I just want to put two shots through it. It's probably not the best, like, test because... I've re-stapled the target and kind of moved things around, but still shooting a 19mm two-shot group. Uh, so that's good. So what I'm actually trying to do is figure out, so exactly two inches high at 100. So we'll go put that in the calculator. Put that in the ballistics calculator and figure out the reticle holdovers. And then go and try it out long. We'll do two or three shot group out long just to verify everything. Um, yeah, so let's go. Alright, so the 270 Wisdom, um, now I'm actually going to go and put some balloons. I'm going to just start at what I can kind of get to in this area and then we'll move out and go and find something a bit longer. But I've got all the data in in the app now, so should be able to hit this balloon at, and try for like 3, I think the first one is 313. So we'll blow it up, hang it up in a tree. Um, which is good because you can watch for the wind as well while the balloon's moving around. And then, um, yeah, go out longer and maybe find something to verify it out longer, like a balloon, or put a balloon up too. But, um, wind's picked up a bit, it's probably running 10 mile, like 15, 20 k's an hour now. So, but that, that's okay, that doesn't stop us from getting our height verification. So, good, see you up there. Is 525. So this 270 Wisdom is all done and verified. Uh, finished up shooting the 145 grain ELDX running at 3160, so 3160 feet per second out of a 22.5 inch suppressed barrel. And we've set this up and verified the holdovers are bang on correct to our load data um, in the scope when it is set at 16 power. So this is quite a good way to do it if you don't. If you don't feel like your scope is quite up to it, um, having a flat shooting rifle, can, you can achieve pretty good results, even just using holdovers. In Streelock Pro as well, if you put in your angle compensation, it'll actually compensate the amount of yards in your reticle, which is which I've also verified, which is a very, very useful tool um, when you start shooting 15, 20 degree angles and you're using, using holdovers. Um, so I still don't think holdovers are the best way to go, but out to four or five hundred yards, it can work well, especially if the rifle is going so fast. I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll catch you on the next one.